someone's done a sneak in, come up the stairs. Cheeky, cheeky. And somewhere down here, Tibble is just at the top of the stairs as well. I don't know where Tib's gone. Tibsy! Hi. They have been fed. I'm going to take uh, Rhubarb out for a W-A-L-K. Good morning, you lovely pair. Right, we'll be back in a bit, Tibbs. Yeah, whatever, Pip. See you in a bit. Oh, you're so pretty. What are we going to do? Look at that tail going. We're all harnessed up. Can only mean one thing. So I have had a morning in bed. Um, I don't know what was wrong with me yesterday. I was downright flipping exhausted and every time I, I sat down, my eyes started to go. Um, I'm suspecting it's one of those things they call a fibro flare up, which I have never really used those words. <laughs> I have a bit of an aversion to them and I don't know, well I do know why, it's because there are, and I'm going to get shot down in flames for this, but I have a bit of an issue with having fibro and it's because a lot of people who in the past I have known say they have fibro were quite lazy people prior to having fibro and then it just became an excuse. So I have a little bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? an unhealthy feeling about the fact that I was diagnosed with fibro last year because I have this preconceived wrong idea of what it is from my experience. So when I say things like that, it's through gritted teeth and it makes me feel uncomfortable. And I know that's a me issue and I have to get around it and I have to work through that. But I can only, only think that's what it was because it's been an emotional week for one reason or another, from sort of last, middle of last week. There's been a lot going through my brain and I guess I'm out of my normal routine. It's been half term, so that's been full on. And we've got the sheep anticipating, you know, the birthing of that. And I'm house sitting, dog sitting, which actually is giving me a bit more relaxation, I think, because I'm not doing all the housework I'd be doing at home. And so I think it's a culmination of everything and that I'm, you know, having that, and that's why. So this morning I got up, put the dog out for a wee, um, propped the back door open so she could come in and out as she wanted, and fed everybody, fed the cat, fed the dog, and then just went back to bed for a bit, and then woke up with them both in the bedroom with me, and then I thought, well, they're in here now. So literally just lolled around until 11 o'clock in bed. I dozed on and off. I tried to, this is how bad it was, I tried to send messages to people, and then I would wake up and go, did I send that message? Because I was also dreaming about doing what I needed to do, and so I was getting myself in such a confused state because I didn't know if I'd actually sent the message that I was thinking about sending prior to falling asleep. I then dreamt that I'd sent the message or tried to send the message. And I, this went on several times before I'd actually successfully send a message to whoever it was I needed to send a message to. So that's where my brain is. I'm just, yeah, I'm feeling exhausted. I'm going to go and get some fresh air, um, come back for a cup of tea, a bit of lunch, and then um, I'm off to see Joseph. Come to Monkey Puzzle, which we absolutely love, with all their lovely cakes. With the dog, she's gonna have a cappuccino. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. What's this? Gluten-free passion fruit cake and a cup of tea for me. Good afternoon. It is half past two nearly and I have arrived at Joseph's. 
Let's go and see what he has planned for us, shall we? The weather's not too bad. I don't know if we'll end up going for a walk or something. Um, it's going to be about 18, 19 degrees tomorrow, and it's not far off that now. I am a little bit warm in my jeans, I must say. But it just doesn't quite feel like shorts weather. Once upon a time, Storm was tied up to a tree. Brown came along and asked Storm what, was ha what has happened. Storm said, I think I got frauded. I think I thought Sky was calling, but it wasn't. It was a fraud. Silver, the octonaut, was planting flowers nearby. Mommy, I finished my story. Meanwhile, Weibei and Mike were walking, and Weibei found something interesting. It was a horn. Mike was a sassy Phoebe, free Furby, and blew on the horn. Weibei shouted, enough! The horn was so loud that it scared a jaguar, which caused the jaguar to go into McTrap's trap. Weibei looked at what had happened and was not happy with Mike. Mike said, Weibei said, not amused, and Mike was embarrassed. He destroyed the horn. Brown asked Selva to sa send dog to sound the octo alert. Storm said, I think I just saw McTrap. They needed the police. Petronics and Octonauts for this mission. Luckily, in the Octopod, Lucy from Super Wings was visiting. They all worked together to free the Jaguar and Storm. It turned out that McTrap frauded Storm, but Mike had accidentally helped McTrap by trapping the Jaguar. McTrap went into jail, but sadly Mike did too. McTrap was a poacher. Weibei turned into the rocking personality and had fiery eyes. Very good, Joseph. No dog to be seen. Oh, hi. Did you get yourself locked in here? Well, aren't you getting cheeky? Huh? You got yourself in and couldn't get yourself back out again. What a menace. What a menace. Where have you gone now? Rhubarb. <laughs> Knocked the board over. You are getting very brave and very cheeky. It's five o'clock and I'm gonna take the dog out again before it rains. It, there's clouds coming over, so I don't know if it's gonna rain or not rain. Oh, bumblebee, huge bumblebee just come flying in. Ideally, it shouldn't be in here. Um, anyway, yeah, we're just gonna go down to the field so she can have a run around in the field. Hopefully it's not too wet and too boggy and then we'll come back because mostly the walks I've done with her have been more road walks and then the walks she's done with her dog walker have sort of been field walks because she's been more muddy anyway we're going to go out and then she'll settle again for the rest of the evening we are so flooded oh my goodness just about within the confines of the river there's a little uh, little tiny place up there just there and I'm going to tell you about the history of that in another video I have spent a lot of my childhood in this bit here. Much to my mother's despair. She was constantly telling me to get out because there's usually a dead sheep, or back in the day there were dead sheep. Sheep? <laughs> sheep. Uh, fallen in the river, further upstream. What I have noticed is there's an awful lot of fishing wire. Where the river is flooded, you can see all of these Fishing leads, are they? Or floats, maybe floats? All caught up like little Christmas decorations in the branches. So you can see how high the water has been. And isn't that sad? But because of fishing, it's all of this litter that's caught up. It's still got a wire attached to it. Oh, you are not coming near me. <laughs> yeah, stay over there. As I was saying. There's still, um, you know, wire, what is it, fishing line attached to it. 
That's obviously not good for nature, is it, at all? All that fishing line gets caught up in. Well, I'm, I'm rather it was caught up in the branches than it was caught up on an animal or a bird. You enjoying that? Is that good? You look very happy. Go on then, go play. Go play. What have you found? Go, go, go. Go on then. Which way do I want to go? That'd be the quicker route. Or through town. Might go through town actually. Another area I grew up playing in was the path here. Although this path wasn't an actual path. This path was just a dirt track that had old railway lines on it. It was just somewhere people used to walk dogs. This path here used to take us up into the housing estate and it might still do. There were trees there with rope swings on it. And then this continued up to where there were some allotments and then it reached a point where the railway line had still been in use for a lot longer and still had the proper tracks down that used to run behind one of the housing estates. I had friends that lived in this estate and again there was no smart little path. It was all brambles and blackberries which were great for picking and eating when we got a bit hungry off and been running around for a bit. Looks like the rain is blowing away. Over that quite lightly I think. I thought we, were, we might get caught in a downpour. Thankfully it seems to have subsided blown off somewhere else to bother someone else. Well, I'm cooking myself some pasta now we're back. I have mopped the floor, which the dog instantly walked over, but that's fine. It's not perfect, but most of the messy patches like paw prints have been cleared up. Lee will be on his way soon. I've got my laundry out of the... What are you looking at? I don't know quite what the dog's got a problem with, but it seems to have a problem with this corner of the room where I've hung my laundry. What's the matter? Clothes that you don't recognise? Growling at it, haven't you? Growling at the corner. Tomato and mascarpone sauce with a bit of red Leicester on the top. That's what I'm having with my pasta. Mm. 